Hey folks, this goes out to you entrepreneurs out there carving a better way for yourselves, your families, and your futures. Just want to make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click on the subscription tab below and get on our YouTube channel and get in the community and stay in the loop of all of the videos that we have coming out continuously, keeping you all updated on business ventures, business tips, family and life motivation, and things of that nature. So make sure you also subscribe to the email link below too as well and get on our email list and actually be able to stay in the loop of things of that nature too in the emails and the insights that we'll be sharing and make sure you also contact us about personalized entrepreneur training and we have a lot of entrepreneur coaching that we do and help you with a one-on-one -on -one, hands-on approach and dealing with business and entrepreneurship and things of that nature so today just want to kind of discuss a particular conversation that I had with a friend of mine, old Mr. Sherman, um, he really gave me some insight on what people are thinking out there um, that are out there in the business world, in the working world, and it really helped me out to understand better um, how to help others and how to share some of the insight that I have with others and what type of questions that people have out there that may be haunting people and trying to do other things in life, trying to carve a, a, another niche in life to be able to start their own businesses, uh, getting to side businesses, investments, and all type of things to be able to enhance their life and provide for their family and their selves and their future as well. Um, three questions that we were discussing, and, and he came up with some questions that really help me see uh, I guess is what people are going through inside themselves what people are thinking when they are trying to attempt to even think about doing something else now three questions that he asked was number one where do you want to start like where to start like just where to actually begin um, and number two what is the most sustainable way to actually keep a business and that's something that's really, uh, I don't know, something to really think about because once you start a business, you need to know how to actually sustain it too or what type of investments to get in and how to sustain those investments and things of that nature. And then after those two questions, the third one would be, then what's next? So after you know where to start, after you get started, and after you sustain your business, then what's next? So we're to start with number one. Uh, where do want to start and where to begin and in getting into business getting into investments and uh, what to do just what to where to begin so I would suggest when thinking about getting into business and providing a second income doing something on the side uh, I think you have to start off with thinking on a broad scale from the beginning which a lot of us probably do, and that maybe that's what paralyzes us sometimes, is because we get stuck on the broad part, thinking of either real estate, uh, investments, stocks, um, starting a business on the side, even if it's you know selling flowers, socks, whatever. I don't know, just whatever it is, chocolates, candy, uh, catering, whatever the case may be. But knowing where to actually begin in doing those things and which one to pick. Um, the thing I would come to the conclusion of with answering that is which one are you most interested naturally in? Like which one naturally just interests you the most? If it's real estate and housing, go into that. If it's uh, stocks, go into that. Like if it's just something that just naturally drives you, you naturally have a curiosity about. You might have a curiosity about cooking, but then possibly think about catering. I mean, just think about things. Where you begin is you think about things that just naturally have an interest of you. That just naturally sparks your curiosity about uh, learning that particular thing. Or maybe something you already know about and you have a, already a background knowledge to it. And you can actually start a business around it. Uh, now, also, there are things out there that... You may just want to do just for the sake of making money and that's understandable too i mean if you want to sell some 
uh, golf clubs on eBay or something. Well, hey, go for it. Because you saw that it was a lucrative type of avenue. Tons of people golf. And that's a big industry. Multi-million dollar, probably a billion dollar industry. So, hey, go for that too as well. But I would also suggest, though, getting to something that you enjoy. And that you naturally enjoy because the money part uh, it, it won't consume you as much even though you want to make money doing it yes but I think if you get into something that you just naturally enjoy then the time frame that's in between the beginning stages and the actual bringing in revenue it doesn't become so stressful like before you actually start making money it's not as stressful because you're actually enjoying doing it actually enjoying just doing the business side and learning more about the particular avenue of that industry and uh, just something you just wanted to kind of had a curiosity about wanted to know anyway so the money will end up coming later but you'll be actually enjoying the field that you are in and the business that you are in so I would think the answer to number one uh, where to start where to begin I think first of all like I said you would think about it on a broad scale which you probably already do as far as what type of um, avenues, industries to get into, and I think you would really be best off if you picked an avenue that went into something that you just naturally have an interest of, and that you just naturally enjoy doing, you naturally uh, enjoy learning about, you just naturally are interested in, and then you're actually able to start formulating a business model around that. And then the you know, the money will come eventually um, because it's almost like you start getting paid to live instead of just trying to make a living it's trying to just make money if you're doing something that you already enjoy doing then the money will come to you so moving on to number two uh, the question of what would be most sustainable uh, way to you know, like manage a business um, to keep it going to keep the business thriving and things of that nature I would say you know what always be a student I think that's a very vital component um, to have success in a business to keep it thriving to keep it moving to keep it sustainable um Stay a student of the industry. Stay a student of the business that you're in and always learn more about it every day. Learn more about the industry all day, every day. Uh, constantly researching. Learning the ebbs and flows of the business, the seasons of the business. Uh, and picking a business to get into or a product to sell that is a year-round product. Now, don't get me wrong, there are seasonal products too as well. I don't, I don't want to you know, discount those because seasonal products can definitely be lucrative too as well. But as far as uh, long-term, if you're going to pick a seasonal product, I would suggest you build your model, your business model around that type of income and your lifestyle around that type of income because the peaks and valleys of those type of seasonal models, those type of seasonal businesses, they can they can be very dramatic and very volatile sometimes because you have high peaks and low valleys in those. So, uh, for example, if you have a holiday product to sell, I mean, it's kind of like duh, you're gonna you're definitely gonna be doing well around holiday season. But you have to be prepared for the rest of the year when you have valleys and not a lot of customers, not a lot of clients, things of that nature, and be able to rev up business for the next holiday season and actually be able to sustain your lifestyle too as well. So I would say as far as having sustainability in a business, just really constantly learning, constantly staying on the edge of technology, uh, your business relationships, uh, staying in contact with your customer base, clients keeping your footprint out there all the time keeping your brand out there in front of people's faces all the time even if it's a down season uh, attaching 
your brand to meaningful things out there that will constantly keep the brand footprint out there in front of people's eyeballs continuously throughout the year. And I think that's a way to sustain your business, to keep the marketing side going and also keeping it in an organic way, especially with social media and things of that nature nowadays and the internet and all of that stuff. You're able to, you know, be able to keep your brand out there at a very low cost and sometimes just through sharing and through friends and through just regular social media that constantly does it organically for you. So um, I guess just a tip to deal with sustainability in business is just once again, I think at the core of it is staying a student of the industry, staying a student of your business. Never think that you know it all. Never think that you just reach the top and that's it because there's plenty of businesses, and I don't want to mention no names, but there's plenty of businesses that were at the top and the pinnacle of their industry and they're no longer around. Maybe they took, I don't know, the customer base for granted. Maybe they took the industry for granted. They didn't stay on the cusp of things. They didn't change with the times. And lo and behold, other companies came and took away the market share. And now they're out of business. So just something to kind of think about as far as sustaining your businesses. Um, be able to always stay a student and constantly learning about your industry and learning about your customer base that supports your product, supports your business, supports your industry. Learn about those type of people so you know how to stay continuously connected to them and keeping your brand in tune with them. Uh, number three, what's next? So after you've implemented the first two, uh, you've picked the industry to get into, you've picked the product to sell, you've picked something to get started with, and then you move to sustainability, being able to be in business for long term and be able to thrive for a while um, what's next so I guess the, the answer to that question would be personally I would honestly suggest and, and, and to be honest I think this is something you maybe should do first but everybody doesn't so the thing to do after you've reached that pinnacle or reached that area in your life and your business where pretty comfortable, you're sustaining it, you're doing pretty well, or you're on the come up or whatever, however you want to word it, I think it's good to really find something that you're passionate about in life. Not just business, but something you're just passionate about that really just lights your fire, um, just in life in general. And attach yourself to it, you can attach your brand to it as well. And, and go for it. Like, strive for pursuing that purpose that's connected to your passion. Something that you just really just enjoy doing. Something meaningful. Something that has to do with giving back. Uh, something that has to do with empowering others. Something that has to do with challenging your constant, um, I don't know, it's like that selfishness that we all kind of deal with. That keeps us something get into something that really helps you help others and it helps you become a better person it helps grow your character it helps you empower the community around you um, and I think if you find that thing then life just becomes more meaningful to you life becomes more rewarding to you life becomes more fulfilling and it's not just only business driven. It becomes purposeful driven and, and passionately driven. You really start enjoying life, enjoying your business, enjoying your family. And it just adds to the whole totality of the fulfillment of life. So I think that's what's next. I think after you've implemented the first two, I think what's next is you really need to find something, find your purpose in life, find something that you really enjoy doing, find something that helps others, that gives back, that empowers people around you and attach your brand to it as well and you'd be amazed at actually how that can contribute to your business and do it in a genuine way, do it in an organic, genuine way of course, and actually really care about people 
but I think long term that really carries you on over into the you know the 10 20 and 30 year range of business and be able to have a legacy to pass on to the next generation have a legacy to pass on to your family your children that's something to just continuously build on generationally so I think that's what's next I think that would be the answer to number three what's next so just keep going for it out there share this with somebody um, I know there's a lot of people that just don't know where to begin or just kind of you know wanting to get their feet wet in business uh, maybe not knowing where to start and share this with them and actually we'll be going over some more of this stuff in detail like in some extreme detailed teaching um, and guiding you through some some avenues in this lane uh, we're going to be making an actual video series that deals with these type of questions uh, we actually have a entrepreneur training course as well if you want to get a copy of that you can get a copy of that now and that really helps answers a lot of these questions in detail and helps train you in the entrepreneur mindset and being able to know when where how how to start what to do to get started uh, there's more detailed information and, and knowledge and insight that can help you along the way to get started and maybe spark you know that creativity in you or that oomph or that energy or that confidence in you to actually go ahead and do the type of businesses that you want to do or just you know have a side business and things of that nature just just getting into that mindset first of all just knowing how to even think about it to get beyond that paralyzing part where you're just stuck with just the questions and you're stuck in that lane and then you just you know, it's almost like you have these questions in the back of your mind that paralyzes you. And then you just say, just forget it. That's what being Sherman was talking about. You just get to the point where you just like, forget it. I just going back to work and just, you know, another year or two go by. And you think about doing a business again or making some side income, side revenue. Then you start revisiting the same, the same questions that you had five years ago, two, three, four, five years ago. And I think these type of talks, these type of insights, these type of material helps out to get you past that particular stage and being able to go past that stage to move forward to be able to take some action so get a copy of that entrepreneur training course uh it's at entrepreneurtrainingcourse.com you can get a copy of that today uh, also contact me about personalized coaching that's what i do is actually help guide you through these type of questions and other tons of other questions that you may have it's questions that are constantly coming to you and being able to move you beyond questions and move you into action. That's the biggest thing. Like, we can ask questions all day, but after you ask five or ten questions, you need to be able to act on those first questions before you even get to the next 20 questions. Like, being able to get stuff in motion. And then as you start getting stuff in motion, you'll be amazed at some of the questions that you have that constantly come up. They'll be answered along the way. But you have to take some of the action first and not get stuck just in question asking. So get your copy of Entrepreneur Training Course at entrepreneurtrainingcourse.com. Answers a lot of your questions that get you into the training of the mindset, to train your mind to be able to think like entrepreneur, to train your mind to be able to know what it takes to get into business, to take that leap on the side away from the job and take that leap forward in business and things of that nature. Um, also contact me for entrepreneur coaching and I can help guide you along the way too. Uh, you just contact me with the email link below or the number below. And, uh, get you started in that lane too so just a little insight for today uh, be on the lookout because we're going to make a video series too dealing with these three particular questions what and how to start uh, number two sustainability in business number three what's next we'll be making a, you know we'll be going over some videos and material dealing with insights and those three questions as well so share this with somebody out there that may be you know interested in getting into business um, and may just want to start the process of training themselves to think about how to get into business and get something started. So take care. God bless. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click on the subscription link below. Share this with somebody. Also get on our email list and also contact me about entrepreneurial personalized training. We look forward to hearing from you. Go out there, do something, 
Go out there and make today matter because it does matter and you matter. Make today count and know that life does get better. No matter what you're going through, the ups and downs, life does get better. Go out there and create it. Take care and God bless.